talking about a lot of young people in this segment. Johnny Cash's grandson is in the news. I say young. He's 51. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's a toddler. Ah, uh, <laughs> yes. Let's reach the youth. Yeah, he's Was he on the slide or the swings? He's 51. He's, uh, well, you know, I, the, I've never heard of him before. Uh, his name is Thomas Gabriel, and he's done a series of acoustic gu- uh, guitar covers called Cash Cabin. And he did, people are saying he sounds remarkably like Johnny Cash. And here we have an example of it. When I was just a baby, my mother told me, son, always be a good boy, don't ever play with guns. But I shot a man in Reno just to watch him die. When I hear that whistle blowing, I hang my head and cry. Can't quite get down low enough for Johnny. Cash. That's a low uh, that's, note. I know that was the one I was waiting for. He didn't get low enough, but he did sound a lot like a lot him like him. did that. Yeah. He was a. Uh, Has he always been a musician? No, he. I was reading a little about him when I heard that music because I know how much you like the uh, Johnny Cash AI. Well, yeah, <laughs> which is not Johnny Cash. It's not. But anyhow, uh, he started his his fa- his grandfather Johnny Cash told him, "Don't get into show business. Too rough a life. You don't want to do it." So he became a cop. But unfortunately, had uh, some drinking issues and oh. substance abuse issues. So uh, they fired him, or he had to leave the job. And so then he started singing a little, and now he sings around Nashville and so forth and does a few records. Yeah, that's cool. Mm-hmm. I, it, because, I mean, and look at other sons of famous or children of famous musicians. It's a hard thing to do. It is. Like Hank Williams Jr. had incredible pressure on him mm-hmm. to be, to live, you know, because his dad died so young. Right. And he had incredible personal demons and struggles, but he seems to have made a way. But it took him a long time. Well, you know, because all they wanted was Hank Williams, senior, a senior mm-hmm. in the, a younger form. And who? And John Lennon's kids never. You know, they had a hard time finding their way. What's an example of somebody who did really well and has followed in their? With a famous parent. Famous parent. That's a yeah. good question. Wilson Phillips. <laughs> <laughs> Wilson you nailed it. Wilson Hold on Phillips. for one more day. That's the one. That's, I'm trying to think of anybody that's had a famous. Yeah. Now this is grandfather. Johnny Cash was his right. grandfather. Uh, in, ath- in in sports, it happens sometimes. Yeah, that seems to be a little bit easier. Bobby athletic Bonds, genes. B- Bobby Bonds, Barry Bonds, Marvin Harrison. Yeah. Oh God, look at that. Look at those two. Who are the best yeah. all time? Is it is it the Bonds or who, who you could say best father and son combo? Griffey and Griffey Jr. The Griffey's great. Yeah, great example. But the Harrisons, Marvin Harrison mm-hmm. Jr. I mean, he hasn't done anything in the pros right. yet. We don't but, know the, the son's but, career yet. It's hard to do in football. It doesn't it doesn't seem to happen that much in football. Mm-mm. That I, I mean, baseball. We've thought of a couple of examples here. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, I'm sure there are others in athletics, but music. I don't know. Uh, acting. There are some. Oh True. yeah, yeah. Yeah, there are generations of acting families. Freddie she, Prince Jr. Boom. Is first he, one I thought. First of. one I thought. Start to come leaps to mind. Well, Judy Garland and Liza Minnelli. Yeah, Judy and Liza. Uh, Debbie Reynolds had a daughter. Was, oh, Carrie, Carrie Fisher. Fisher. Carrie Fisher. Carrie Fisher is so, Debbie Reynolds. Yeah. Now they had a little. They had a little in. Yeah. Well, so, but you could say the successful careers. They for did. Sure. That's yeah. true. Uh, Matt, musician that's followed in their parents' footsteps and done well. Go ahead, Matt. Miley Cyrus. Maybe the best example. <laughs> yeah. Well, an example. You can't argue it. Maybe the best example. In fact, she's outpaced her father yeah, by Billy a was, lot. He was a kind of a flash in the pan. One song. Singing. One song. Yeah. But Miley Cyrus now, I would say, is that's one surpassed. of Oh, by far. Yeah. Uh, one of the biggest names in pop music, for sure. Tony, all right, a, a son or daughter that has done well after having a famous musician father or, or mother. Go ahead. For musicians, uh, Nat King Cole and Natalie Cole. She had a decent run. Yeah, I'll take that. Mm-hmm. That's that's pretty good. She did very well. That's a good example. I liked her '70s stuff. I didn't. I didn't like her when she was. I didn't like the music that she sang. Computer generated with her dad. Mm-hmm. I thought that, that was derivative. Know. How do you think Bronny James is going to do? They're saying the Lakers. Look at the pressure on that kid. The Lakers may draft him, which would be not the smartest move. Really, he's not. He's not really. And is that? Does it make sense from a business point of view? Well, I think. Let me say this: If LeBron wants to play with his son and says, "I'll stay another two or three years if you draft my son," is that what you do? Or do you just yeah, ship him? Do you ship LeBron? Ship, to ship the him Knicks? out? No, people want to see that, and then that's it. You know, the bloom's off the rose unless he's really great. He's not. I mean, it's, he's okay. It's hard to. It, Look at Michael Jordan's get, kids. They're not. They, they were just decent. Just ball decent players. ball. I think Bronny James is about the same. I don't know that anybody would pick him if his last name wasn't James. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, LeBron, you know, I kind of thought the same thing. Ship him away, but 
again yesterday, uh, somebody was on ESPN talking about his stats. He was phenomenal this yeah, year. I didn't the know team it. had a good year. He yeah. had a good year. He was incredible this year. I did not realize that. He averaged like 26 points a game. It's one of the places you have to perform. It's hard to get a lot of nepotism in sports because you've got to you perform. you got to perform. Yeah. David, you're talking about fathers and sons or mothers and daughters who have done well. This is an athlete. Go ahead. Sure. Think about basketball. Charlotte Hornets. Del Curry has Steph and Steph. Yeah. Right, yeah, that's Good true. Points. And Steph is I mean, the best yeah, of all game of them. Changer. He hundred percent. I was watch I'm I'm totally into now the Knicks seventy six er series. <laughs> you joined it what game f- five? Game game f- six. You saw the last I saw the last I game. saw the last five minutes of game five and said, I'm in. Wow, look at you. It was it was <laughs> I'll alert the commissioner. Gee. <laughs> Jeez. Area man, they, <laughs> man does the least he can. You're what the what? NBA wants. God. <laughs> you God how many anything? games did it take him to <laughs> Area man does least. To change the F and channel. Let me tell you, I came home from Pickling uh, two nights ago, flipped on the TV, five minutes to go in the game. Philadelphia was dead and buried, came back and won it, and I said, I'm in. Had your wife left the television on a different channel? You I would, would have not seen I, it. I, I, yeah, that's right. If my wife had, that's true. I would have been watching Frasier reruns like I always do. Last night or I came home. Sheldon. Listen, last night I was picking. I came home. Frasier was on. I was like, all right, I'll watch Frasier. I don't have the energy to change the channel. Yeah. Okay, I just turn it and on. It's comfortable. Well, it's comfortable. That's right. So it was on. I was like, all right, I'll do this. And then it went overtime. I was like, I'm not watching the overtime. Well, I did. Yes, you did. I you did are. watch the whole darn thing. Jason, you're talking about now. This is musicians, fathers and sons. Go ahead. How about uh, Bob Dylan's son Jacob from the Wallflowers? Yeah, he, a, yeah. he made a little uh, little noise in the nineties. Had the really one hit, I guess, right? So long ago I That's Jacob Dylan. Two or three, right? That I can recall. Maybe this is the one I know. The Wallflowers, right. yeah. Okay, I'll give you that one. Britt, you're talking about athletes now, fathers and sons, athletes. Go ahead. You got like a big influx in there right now in baseball with Jackson Holiday, Vladdy Jr., uh, Bo Bichette. Drew Jones. I mean, there's just a ton of players from the 90s that their kids are coming up now. That's true. Uh, if you follow baseball, you do know these yeah, names. Bob Bichette, and mm-hmm. Vlad, Vlad Guerrero Jr. is you know, pretty good. Vlad, mm-hmm. Vlad Guerrero Sr. was unbelievable. Great player, Great player for the Angels. Thank you, Britt. Uh, Lynn, ath- yes. this is athletes now. Fathers and sons, go ahead. You have missed the biggest one in football, the Manning family. That's true. Archie Manning and then Peyton and Eli. That's true. Ar- Archie was very good. He was. He never got on a good team. Yeah, he got right. shoved on a team that went any good. That, thank you, Lynn. It's That's true. Mm-hmm. Because the Mannings between them have four Super Bowls, just the sons. Mm-hmm. And then the grandson's coming up. You know, he's in Arch. college now. Arch Manning. Sports Ryan, he'll know. Sports Ryan, go ahead. So, uh, I think it was either Dave or Jim said a few minutes ago, it's hard to make it in sports on nepotism alone. The one place that doesn't count is probably motorsports. Mm-hmm. Uh, you look at, like, the grandson of Richard Childress, Austin Dillon, is, if he drove for any other owner, he'd been out of that car five years ago. Yeah, well, you own the car. I guess that's why. Yeah. You know, and you, it's a lot about promotion, too. That's a good point. Mm-hmm. You know, that it's more promoting than winning. You don't have to win if you have that famous name. In basketball, I mean, if Bronny James goes there and doesn't do anything, eventually he's going to be gone. Mm-hmm. You know? right. That would just be to keep LeBron James around. Thanks, Sports Ryan. Let me tell you about my son. Please. This goes back, you know, we just had that story of the airport that had not lost a piece of luggage in 30 years. Well, there's been an ongoing issue for the past, um, I'm going to say, two weeks. My son's coming home from college after completing his first year. Huzzah. We've celebrated uh, his exams. He's made a 62, a 72, a 75. Mm. <laughs> yes. Right where he wants to be. 100 still the scale, yeah? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm assuming. Okay, it's not 200. <laughs> took his uh, he took his exams online, many of them, you know. And uh, did, did, did you, did mom or dad, go help pack up his well, uh, dorm room? That was the debate. Are we going to have to go? Because his mother said, you know, he she bought these packing cubes, which are all the rage for college students. Uh, before we moved him in, and she said, you know, we got everything in one car on the way down there. He should be able to pack that up and put it in his vehicle and bring it back. He's got an SUV. You know, do you do, do you have to bring furniture home, or is it just bedding and clothing? It was mo- bedding and clothing, uh, and your toiletries. A, yeah, a little bit of furniture, you know, like a a little rolling cart, things like that. And so the, of course, he called two weeks ago and said, "Well, you got to come and do this." I'm sure, he assumed that the the snow plows would be there. Correct. Well, we went non snow plow this time. My wife led this charge, and she said, "No, nope. it's time." She said, "You need to pack it up. You got your own wings now. You have all those." 
packing devices that I bought for you. Everything is, you know, you can throw a lot of stuff away. How big is a cube? Pretty big. It's it's like a, a hard, um, like a vinyl almost. And it and once you fill it, it becomes like a, almost a, a makeshift suitcase. But Do it's you pre- squish the air out of it and cram stuff in? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And it's a pretty good product. I have to say, she bought them. And, of course, I was like, money, money, money. But it turned out pretty good. So the big debate became, so we decided he's doing it. The big debate was he got the car all packed up. Now, this is uh, the last couple of days. He's like, my car is packed. He goes, we, we got him a floor lamp. Now, this is uh, the floor lamp has a base on the bottom of it about the size of, you know, uh, a dictionary, dish. you know, a dish. Yeah. And then it's a, a stalk, you know, and then the top. Four feet, five feet. Yeah, five feet long. And then the top is, of course, the shade and the bulb. Wonderful. So he calls and he goes, Dad, there's no way I can get this lamp into my car. And I said, I don't, I don't think there should be any problem getting the lamp into your car. I mean, I could picture it. Do you have to lamp. disassemble it? Well. Disassemble it? That, yes, you would have to. But he, for the last three days, like, there's no way. There's no way. So yesterday, I got a call from my wife, and she said, you're going to have to deal with your son. He's refusing. He wants to put the, the lamp in the dumpster, and I'm not letting him do that. <laughs> no, no. She goes, you're going to have to deal with him. So yesterday. Meaning she's at the end of her you're rope. You're right. She's done. She's at the end of her rope. So he called me, and I was happily sitting on the couch, eyes, you know, I was in and, out, in and out of sleep. What Post salad, phone on my stomach. It started buzzing. I was like, okay. So he goes, there is no possible way. I texted you a picture of my car. So he showed me the picture of the back of the car, and there's a lot of stuff in it. But the top of it was mostly like comforter. You could easily just slam squish it down it. and you squish it. Plus, I know what a lamp is. It's a floor lamp. The stalk of it is going to just slide yeah, in. The long know? way. Right. Into the, even SUV, yeah? So yes, into the yeah. back seat. Yes, yes, yes. And then to the, yeah. So he goes, I'm going to FaceTime you and show you. <laughs> so he FaceTimes it from his car. He says, all right, where's the lamp? He goes, it's in my room. I said, well, go to your room. And get the... <laughs> so he starts walking to his room, carrying me along the whole way. <laughs> And I said, I don't. I, hey, I don't. Chip. Yeah. <laughs> no. I'm leaving today. <laughs> no. Today. Right. So I said, and he goes, my phone's on 1%. Of course. <laughs> I said, hang up with me. Get the lamp. Take it back to your car. So he takes it back to the car. He's standing there with it now. He's back. He's FaceTiming. I'm, he's holding the lamp. He's a C. Like a Charlie Chaplin-esque yeah. figure. See, there's no way. <laughs> and I said, take the shade off. He goes, you can do that. <laughs> I said yes. Take so he, he goes. Oh, I said unscrew the top. He unscrews it. He take. I said take the shade. Go to the front seat of your car, the passenger seat. He's like it's. It, it was totally empty. He put the shade there. He goes. What about this bulb? I said take the bulb out. <laughs> How do you do that? <laughs> Wait, yeah, this like, isn't my car. <laughs> <laughs> How many pirates does it take to uh, unscrew uh, a light bulb? <laughs> yeah. So goes back again. He has it all done. I said now. Do you think you could slide it in? He goes. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So he slides it <laughs> All in. Right. Now, Chris Dibbs said, this reminds me of an old TV show that he watches called South Park. This is what it's like talking to a teenager. In this instance, the teenager is at someone else's home, but is hungry. So he calls. Young Stan. Young Stan. Hello? Bruh, how do I make ramen? <laughs> Excuse me? I'm starving and the instructions are all stupid. Oh, is this my teenager? How's it going, dude? It's not going. The ramen's all hard and I can't eat it like that. Well, you have to put the noodles in boiling water. Where do I get water? You... do you have a sink? Bruh. (laughs) Bruh what? I'm sorry I'm not a five-star chef! (laughs) That's it. That's it. Two guys named Chris Show. Rock 92. I cannot tell you how many times I've said to my son, well, can you back the car into another space? Bruh. (laughs) (laughs) Bruh. Like, don't even think it, you know. Oh, yeah. Is is there any way for you to lift the the windshield wipers and clean under them? Bruh. Oh, yeah, first, first year. Yeah. First year. First year done. First year Wait, done. Good one. Wait then, till you get the survey. Uh, no, yeah. And then at the end of that clip from South Park, at the end, it's always like, you know, and yesterday he told me, well, I'm sorry I'm not a moving company. <laughs> I just slap him. <laughs> I never played Tetris. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry I'm not a moving van. What do you want me to do? <laughs> I'm unbelievable.